Brothers and sisters, today I am going to talk about one of the most beautiful creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. Someone who is not being given their due respect, love and care in many cases. I am going to talk about the mother. That beautiful creation of Allah who gives life to any place she lands in. The light that makes us feel safe and secured. The source of love and compassion which are endless. The mother is a symbol of patience and perseverance. She tolerated us crying and screaming as infants, was patient with us as we grew up, struggled with us when we became adults solving our problems. In simple terms, our mothers gave up their lives for us. She handed us her life on a golden plate. But the most important thing here is that she did it without expecting anything in return, nor asking anything in return. This is just the nature of the mother. That endless merciful person, when Allah Azza wa Jal wanted us to understand His mercy and, his, and the extent of His mercy, he, he gave the example of the mercy of the mother. Everything changes. People change, ideologies change, ideas change, concepts change, even faith changes. But the mother's love and mercy never changes. And it never ceases. If there is anything that will never change is that of the love of your mother for you and her mercy upon you. She's a source of endless giving and sacrifice. The journey starts with you or started with you and me when she was pregnant. She went through all of this pain during pregnancy until delivery and then delivered us and then suckled us وَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَارِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ كُرْهًا وَوَضَعَتْهُ كُرْهًا وَحَمْلُهُ وَفِصَالُهُ ثَلَاثُونَ شَهْرًا We enjoyed upon man to be kind to his parents. And then the speech switches directly to the mother. His mother carried him with hardship and delivered him with hardship and his suckling and pregnant her suckling and pregnancy is a period of 30 months ووصينا الإنسان بوالديه حملته أمه وهنا على وهن وفصاله في عامين 
We enjoyed upon man care for his parents. Again, this speech directs itself to the mother. His mother carried him in weakness upon weakness. You see this description of the state of the mother when she bore us until she delivered us and then suckled us until the state of weaning the child. But the story doesn't end there. Then she raises us. She teaches us how to talk, how to walk, how to eat, how to drink, how to use the bathroom. So no matter what we do, no matter how much we give up for her, we can never pay her back. Ibn Umar saw a man carrying his mother on his back and circumambulating the Kaaba, doing tawaf. So the man looked at Ibn Umar and he said, Ya Ibn Umar, aturani jazaituha? Oh Ibn Umar, do you think I pay her, paid her back? He said, na, wala zafra min zafaratiha. He said, no. Not even a single contract contraction when she gave birth to you. But you did well. And Allah rewards with a small deed, an abundant reward. That's why Islam honored the, state, the status of the mother. See, history never knew any faith, any system that honored the woman as a mother, as Islam does. No other faith, no other system raises the rank of the mother as Islam does. It's incumbent upon us to be kind to their mother. There are Narrations upon narrations after narrations addressing kindness to parents and particularly to the mother. But I will list few. I will just mention few. Al-Bukhari mentioned in his book Al-Adab Al-Mufrad and is classified as authentic by Al-Albani that a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Bima ta'muruni? What do you command me to do? Now this man is asking about what he needs to do in his faith or with regards to his, his faith. He said, Birra ummak. Be dutiful to your mother. The man repeated the question again. He said, be dutiful to your mother. He repeated the question the third time. He said, be dutiful to your mother. He repeated the question the fourth time. He said, be dutiful to your mother. And on the fifth, on the fifth time, he said, be dutiful to your father. Because there's a massive difference between the father and the mother. See, when Allah enjoined upon us dutifulness to them, He specialized the mother in the speech. Not because the father has no rights, but because his right is much less than the mother. In this case, it's four times less. In another narration, it's three times less. Why? Because of all of that pain, all of that suffering, all of that sacrifice the mother goes through from the time she becomes pregnant until she dies or you die. Even if the mother was not Muslim. Asma radiallahu anha, and this is reported by Muslim, was visited by her polytheist mother. So she didn't know how to deal with her. She came visiting to her from Mecca. 
She said, I will go and ask the Prophet wasallam. She did. She said, should I be kind to my mother? Should I be dutiful to her, knowing that she's not Muslim? He said, Naam, sili ummaki. Yes, be dutiful to your mother. Even if she's not Muslim? Yes, even if she's not Muslim. Because she remains a mother. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ. This is reported by Al-Hakim, classified as sound by Al-Albani. Asking the Prophet ﷺ's opinion about going out to perform jihad. Jihad! The highest rank in Islam. He said, do you have a mother? Meaning, is your mother alive? He said, yes. He said, stick to her. Stay with her. For Jannah is at her feet. Scholars said, meaning, the path leading to Jannah is by humbling yourself to your mother. It's through obedience of the mother and dutifulness to the mother. As Sakhawi rahmatullah alayhi said, Man arada dukhul al Jannah, whoever wants to be admitted into Jannah, then let him humble himself to his mother. The only person you're allowed to be humiliating yourself to, or with, or towards, is the mother and the father. Islam even made dutifulness to mothers a means of expiating major grave sins, al-kaba'ir. In the book of Imam, in, in the book of Imam al-Hakim, classified as authentic by al-Albani, a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, I've committed a major grave sin, one of the kaba'ir. He said, do you have a mother? Is she alive? He said, no. He said, do you have a maternal aunt? He said, yes. He said, then be beautiful to her. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said in another narration, al khalatu um. The maternal aunt is like the mother in status. So she deserves the same dutifulness. And the result will be the same as if you're, making, you're, you're being dutiful to your mother. What is birr? What is dutifulness to mother? To the mother? It's respect. It's honoring her. It's obedience to her. It's seeking what pleases her and doing it. It's refraining from anything that displeases her. It's talking to her kindly. It's lowering our voices when we speak to them. It's giving them preference over anything and anyone in the world. That's what dutifulness to the mother is. But dutifulness to mothers doesn't stop when they die because some might say, well, my mom passed away. What can I do? Yes, you can do. And you can do a lot. She did not perform Hajj, do that. She had days she missed in Ramadan, make them up. She vowed to do something and did not fulfill, fulfill it. All of these are authentic narrations that are mentioned either by the Bukhari or Muslim or both. And in the book of Imam Muslim, narrated by Abu Huraira, the Prophet wasallam said, when the son of Adam dies, all his deeds cease, except and then he mentioned one of them, a righteous son who supplicates Allah for him. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said the man or the parent will be raised in rank in Jannah, not knowing why he would ask, how did I obtain this? He will be then told, it's by virtue of your children asking forgiveness for you. There's a lot we can do. Spend charity on their behalf. Many things can be done, but it's only those who want the reward from Allah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabi al-Mustafa. Thumma amma ba'd. 
Islam made uquq, undutifulness, to parents, haram, and particularly to the mother. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari, إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ عُقُوقَ الْأُمَّهَاتِ Allah made forbidden upon you to be undutiful to your parents, to your mothers. Not only that, he made undutifulness, he made uquq, one of the major grave sins, one of the major kaba'ir, not just a kabira, akbar al kaba'ir. Ala adullukum ala akbar al kaba'ir? Should I not tell you about the most grave of sins? He mentioned associating with Allah, and immediately, uquq. And although many of the texts speak about uquq, undutifulness to parents. But due to the virtue of the mother, uquq with, in, in her regards or with her is graver than uquq with the father. There are many texts warning us from the punishments that we can become deserving of if we act with uquq towards parents and particularly with the mother. Mal'oonun! Mal'oonun! Man haqqa walidayh! Cursed is the one who is undutiful to his parents. Reported by Al-Tabarani. Classified as authentic by Al-Albani. Another punishment. His punishment will be hastened to him in this life. As the Prophet ﷺ said, and again this is by At-Tabarani, classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, there are two sins for which Allah Azzawajan hastens the punishment in this life before the hereafter. And one of them is Uquq. Number three. Your deeds will not be accepted. ثلاثة لا يقبل الله منهم صرفا ولا عدلا أي فرضا ولا نفلا. Three types of people from whom Allah Azza wa Jalla will not accept any obligation or optional deeds. One of them is the person who perform who acts with uquq with his parents, who is undutiful to his parents. Number four, he will be deprived from entering Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Al Nasa'i, classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, There are three types of people who will never enter Jannah. One of them is the person who is undutiful to his parents. Al Hassan ibn Ali said, after reciting the verse in which Allah Azza wa Jal forbids us from saying uff. Uff is the least anyone can say or do because it's also the sound one makes when he's frustrated or unpleased about a situation. As simple as this breath coming out. He said if there is anything less than uff, that can be considered as undutifulness, it would have been made prohibited. Then he said, Let the person who is undutiful to his parents do as many good deeds as he wants, he will not. He will not enter Jannah. This is serious. This is serious. When we grow up, we feel, I'm a man, or I'm a young lady. I have my own personality, my own life. I make my own decisions. Yes, and therefore, 
My mother has nothing to do with me. She can't tell me what to do. See, there are many things we do that are considered to be uquq. But we take it for granted as if we're not doing anything. Rolling your eyes when your parents talk to you. Raising your voice. Only as minor as making them sad is uquq. Let alone making them cry. Let alone raising your voice. Let alone iyadan billah like some people too who are miserable hit their father or mother. But there's a particular type of uquq which has become a phenomenon. It is with those young men or men who are married whom when they get married, the slot of the mother drops to second. And the queen rises on the top first rank, which is the wife. On account of the mother. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. How can you? How can you give preference to your wife over your mother and neglect her? When your mother's womb was the place of settling and comfort for you for nine months. Her breast was the source of food for you for two years. Her lap was your couch and your bed. Even after you reach puberty. How can you? When your, mother's, when your mother had many sleepless nights when you were ill. Tears. Tears over your health and situation and well-being never ceased. She gave you her life and now you neglect her. She becomes a second-class citizen for you. Did you forget her love to you? Did you forget that when she was told she's pregnant with you, she was so happy, flying in air. And when she saw you, regardless of how many sleepless nights she's had, as soon as you smiled, she would forget everything. you forget when you grew up how she was teaching you and helping you with your homeworks and when you became a young man and went out with your friends she would st she would stay up until you come back unable to sleep until she saw you sound and safe did you forget all of this how can your heart become so hard after all of this How can you forget her status and rank? How can you forget her importance to you in your life? How can you forget the many times she always supplicated and supplicated and supplicated for you with or without your request? How can you forget? What will you answer Allah Azza wa Jal? When he asks you about her rights. What will you say to Allah Azza wa Jal when he asks you about your undutifulness to her? What would be your reaction? And what would be your response? The minute you get the news, that's your mother.
How would you feel? Explain to me your emotions and your feelings when you receive the news that your mother just died. How would you feel? What will go on in your mind? One thing I wish I did. I wish I was. I wish I was kind. I wish I didn't give preference to anything or anyone over her. The chance is still here. We're still alive. Every mother is still alive. Hasten to please in her. Hasten to earn her supplications with content and pleasure. Not as a mother, but as a pleased mother, as a happy mother, as a mother who feels her value in your life and in your heart. Make her feel that value. Make her feel important. Make her feel loved. Tell her that you love her. Tell your mother, call your mother and tell her you love her. Tell her how much you love her. <laughs> tell her how much you care for her. Tell her how much you appreciate what she did for you. <laughs> tell her how much you appreciate her sacrifice and that she gave up her her life for you. Allahumma gfir li ummahatina. Oh Allah, have mercy upon our mothers. Oh Allah, admit them to the highest level of Jannah without prior punishment. Allahumma gfir li ummahatina. 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 اللهم اغفر لأمهاتنا وآبائنا اللهم ارحمهم كما ربونا صغارا اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا اللهم عافنا واعف عنا اللهم اغفر لنا تقصيرنا في حق والدينا Oh Allah forgive our shortcomings with our parents Oh Allah, forgive our shortcomings with our parents. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman al-Samawati wal-Aradin, Ya Rahman al-Samawati wal-Aradin, اغفر لنا تقصيرنا. اللهم لا تعذبنا فإنك علينا قادر. وارحمنا فإنك بنا راحم والطف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير اللهم أدخلنا ووالدينا فردوسك الأعلى بغير سابقة حساب ولا عذاب وأقم الصلاة